Hello and welcome to another episode of ES Repair. In this video I'm going to show you how to hook up a battery backup system which are good to have for anything that's sensitive that you want to protect from outages like your TVs, uh, routers, your internet, your computers. These things are good to have when the power goes out. This one here that I have sitting here is one of the recent ones that I've purchased. This one here is made from APC and they do have some quality products that I like to use. This one here is a, is a Pro 1000 which is a 1000 voltage amp battery backup system. They do have a thing on their website that will assist you in the purchasing one of these by telling everything that's going to be hooked up to it and it will tell you what size you'll need. This one here I purchased and as you can see it's, it's a rather big size but it's compact and not hard to use. It does come with its own software to help control your computer so if the power goes out you can set your computer up to where it can automatically save your current settings and then shut off. But it's real easy. Now when you get started with these you can see the back which has all your connections. It can protect your cable, your phone service, it has a USB connector so your computer can monitor it. This one here has a new feature which is for the Ener Energy Star. This allows it to set a master such as your computer tower. So when you turn your computer on, anything else that's connected to the highlighted plugs will also come on, like your monitor, your uh, audio, whatever else you have hooked up. When you turn the tower on, it will also turn these functions on too as well. Then you have your extra, your battery backup, which is considered the power will stay on in case the main power cuts off. This side is a surge only, which means that it only protects the components. That's it. it does, it's not supported by the backup. You also have a physical ground that can be also connected. This is all that's on this side. You also can tell you got the plugs are separated. This is for the block plugs, the wall mount plugs. A lot of uh, audio speakers have those types of plugs. So you have extra space to put block plugs on here. Now, before you connect anything up to this thing, you need to take it out. Take the batteries out. Turn it around. Now, depending on the unit that you have, will also depend on how to take the batteries out. When they're shipped, they're shipped unplugged. So what you have to do, as you can see, here's the connector for the battery. We need to slide the battery out. Now these are lead acid sealed batteries so they don't require any sort of maintenance whatsoever. Now you got these tracks on here that will allow you to insert the batteries inside the device in one direction only. That way you don't have it hooked up backwards. You just take it, make sure it's all lined up, and you slide it in, and you push as far as it is you can, and now it's connected. Now you just put your cover back on. Technical difficulties here, folks. Just slightly. There we go. And there you go. Now the batteries are connected and the unit's ready. Now, before you can actually use this device, they must be plugged up into an electrical outlet.
any electrical outlet will do. That thing out. And now you can hear probably a little humming. These batteries have to charge for anywhere between 8 to 16 hours before you use the device. And it's, it's uh, very important that you wait for the batteries to recharge first before you use this device. Now, once your battery back up, best time to do it is overnight. So once you get your battery back up charged, you can turn it on. Anytime you turn the APC on, it goes through a self-diagnostic, which what it does is it checks all of its internal components to make sure everything's functioning. It checks that the battery's charged up. This is one of the displays that this model has. It will tell you that your AC you got your AC, that the AC is present. I've got the leaf indicates that it is energy compliant, that I had the master thing I showed earlier turned on. Shows you how many watts is being pulled. Below it, it shows you the strength of the batteries. In this case, it's full. Now here, you can have it tell you the, the voltage it's coming in. You can also do uh, if it had any events like a power failure, a brownout, blackout, uh, it'll tell you uh, how much time the batteries contain. For your, uh, the more power you draw from these, the less remaining time that you'll have. It'll tell you the percent, how much load's being drained onto it, and the percentage. It will tell you how much voltage that it's pr producing. It also has filters in it. If the input voltage goes down to say 100 volts, this will compensate it. It's got circuitry in it that will compensate it. And it shows you how much voltage this thing is providing now. It tells you the frequency of the electri electrical energy it's going through it and back to where how much voltage is going in. Now, once you get your batteries fully charged, you can turn it off, connect all your components that's going to go to it. Now once you get all your, your computer and stuff all plugged into it, it does come with software to install it that will monitor your computer and monitor your APC as well. I'm going to show you that next. Now, once you have your batteries charged and ready to go, you have your uh, computers and your monitor and stuff plugged into your battery backup unit. Now, the next thing you do is turn it on. Now, the menu that comes with these, it also comes with a CD-ROM that shows you how to do your settings and stuff. As you can see, it's showing me how much time I'm having left. Now nothing's on except for my speakers. And it, once it goes through its setup, now all you gotta do, you can use your tower, but you'll have to read the manual and it will tell you the steps it take to program the master. I don't have it with me at the moment. But once you turn your computer on, you can switch through. It's showing how much time I would have left on everything that's running on the batteries. This is how much time it's currently available. This shows how much of a load it's being uh, uh, drawn from my battery backup. This also indicates the more of a load you put onto it, the less battery backup time you have available. This is the load in voltage amps, or watts, I'm sorry. This is how many watts that my system is currently pulling. 
and it's going to keep varying because the computer is starting up and everything is warming up. I can also, this is the percentage of the load, which it ain't very much. It's between one quarter to one third of the load. So I'm still in safe in a safe range. This is how much voltage is being provided. Now if the input was to brown out or anything like that, this will compensate it. This is the cycles that I'm showing. And now we're back to the input. Now once you get your USB cable connected and plugged into an available USB port, now you can install the software. This one here is already installed, and this is the software disk that they come to with. This contains the manuals, it contains the uh, driver to uh, communicate with the device, and it comes with the software so you can monitor it. And I'm going to show you what, how it works. Now, once you have your software installed, you should notice an icon down here at the bottom. It'll say APC, battery backup, power, personal power chute, blah, 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 blah. This is a program that will monitor your battery backup system. Down here, it tells you it's, it's on AC power now. The battery is fully charged. And this is the estimated time, depending on what I'm drawing, this is how much time I'll have if the power was to go out. Here gives you technical data, so if you need technical support, tells you everything about your unit, operating system you're using, for all of your technical support in case you have any problems. The monitoring, you can choose your performance. This will tell you the last time that a self-tester performed, if any, which it probably wasn't when you get it. You can keep track for however many weeks. You can go up to 24 weeks. It will show you how many times that the APC encountered a blackout, under voltage, over voltage, or any kind of electrical noise. If it detects any of these, it will intervene. And this will tell you how often it's done it. Current status tells you what the battery backup is doing right now. As you can see it's on AC power, the battery is at 100%, it's charged, no event has been recorded, and the last self-test which was performed today passed. This also indicates how many watts is being currently drawn. As you can see I can go up to 600 watts. Now, first thing you want to do, once you get your system all set up, get your batteries fully charged from overnight, once you get your program installed, the first thing you want to do is run the self-test of the unit to make sure it's working properly. To do that, you're under click on the run self-test. Now, as you can see, the light will begin to blink. This initiates that it's going through a self-test. You have the indicator there showing it's going on battery. This is testing the battery. Then once it's finished, you'll get a message coming back saying it's passed. This indicates that the system is working properly. And it's a good idea to do this at least once, about once a month to every other month, depending on how often it has to go to battery, to make sure that the system is working safely. Now we're going into the configuration. Notification will allow you to let you know when it goes on battery. It will also enable you to know that if the system goes on a battery, it will pop up a message. You can also have it do it at all times or you can disable it period or you can disable it between certain times of the day because anytime the power goes out 
then it's going to sound an alarm to let you know, hey, power is out on battery. You can set it how you want to set it, set this up. Right now, it's set between 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. that disables the alarm. Now, if you look on the screen here, you'll see the little speaker there with a slash to it. That means it's on mute. So if the power was to go out, it won't sound an alarm in the middle of the night. Might wake you up. The next configuration will be the runtime. This, you decide if you want to preserve the battery power or if you want to run the computer as long as possible but you can also set for how much time can be left on the battery before it shuts your computer down. Here it's set for eight minutes. What this will do will leave my computer running until there's eight minutes left of battery supply and then I'll begin to shut my computer down. To preserve the battery power, you can tell the system to shut down the computer if it's been on for, say, five minutes on battery. You can choose between one minute to five minutes. So if it's been on for five minutes, it'll automatically shut your power off. This is to pervert, preserve power in the batteries for successive power outages. Next, for sensitivity, if you change something, be sure you apply the changes. For sensitivity, this refers to electrical noise. You can choose by default as high. Now, if you're noticing that your, your battery backup is constantly going to the battery, then you can change the sensitivity down. This only monitors electrical noise that may be coming in on the, on the power line. This is for the default. Medium, you can use it if you're going to the battery quite often. Low is low sensitivity in case it's constantly going to the battery, which indicates you got a lot of electrical noise on the power line. Now, for the last setting is the voltage setting. This sets up the battery backup and tells it when to intervene. Here it says that if the AC utility voltage goes above 144 volts, it will kick in and go to battery. Or, if the AC utility voltage goes below 88 volts, then it will go to battery then. Now, you can set these. Here it shows you currently that it's set for 88 volts and rise above 144. Currently it's showing there's 120 volts. And now it's showing there's 121. Now you can change these between 144 to 150. The minimum is 144, which is best for most places, but if you do experience problems, you can raise the, the, the upper voltage limit. And the same thing for the low voltage. You can go between 78 as the, the most up to 88. So if it's dropping a lot, then you can change these uh, upper and lower voltages. And then once you make these changes, just choose apply. And then you can come back out here to show you everything that your computer's done. Now it will run in the background, so you should see a little icon back here where it says, it's, it looks like a little computer monitor with a parachute on top of it. That's for the program. And it will constantly monitor this. If the power goes out, Get up, do it. When the power goes out, such I'm going to unplug it. As you can see, the indicator has changed. It is now showing that you're on battery. That and it shows exactly how many minutes you have left. 
Now it shows my area network's connect disconnected because I pulled the plug. That's okay. If you can look down here in the bottom, which is a real small icon, I don't know if you can zoom in on there or not, it says now it's not receiving AC power. This is telling you now that it's on a battery backup and it will have a little symbol down here showing a battery. You double click it and bring this up under monitor it will show you that an event has occurred that the battery backed up has intervened this is showing the current status now it's showing that it's currently coming off the battery the battery has currently 95 percent charge left and it's also indicating that it's currently being discharged and right now I've got three minutes left before the, the computer begins to shut down because I turned it to only run for five minutes now this is currently what I'm drawing in power it's showing 138 watts now I can go back and change this and keep it on as long as possible until I have eight minutes left in my battery and choose apply and see down here in the bottom it increased it from three minutes to 25 it will say here 33 but here it says 25 because I'm allowing eight minutes of battery time remaining and then when the power restores it will automatically go back show the AC power it's showing that I'm receiving electrical voltage and if you've noticed the alarm didn't sound because it is after 8 p.m. when I'm making this video so the alarm isn't sounding you'll also get a notification in the bottom saying that the power has been restored when you come back up here to monitor system and choose current status you can see that it's showing that yep you are back on AC power the battery has 93 percent charge and it's currently in the charging state which means the unit is charging your batteries then it says the last time it was intervened was because of a blackout and when you look under performance it will show you that the last time it was last intervened, the date and the time, for the last four weeks it intervened because of a blackout and here it shows you how long the system was on battery power for that event. And this is all that's basically to do it. It will protect your computer from brownouts, blackouts, uh, electrical noise and over voltage under voltage and it's a good thing to have when you're having a, uh, a new computer that you want to protect especially if, if you're in uh, a noisy area that's got a lot of electrical noise you want to protect your all your electronics equipment and this will be your best bet to have well I'm your host Mr. Fixit thank you for watching